back to you. And I was using this as an uh, interview camera in different kind of angles. And, yeah. I, and I also used them for, you know, when I was walking around and into this conference, that's where people was talking about. How, how was it better than a flip camera was or a Kodak camera? It's 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 not better. It's it's just more. Uh, it's more of a feeling. It's more of your you are very close to yeah. where it happens. So it's 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 um. In, in our bigger newspaper here, uh, Dagens Nyheter. I don't know yeah. if you're familiar with that. Yeah. There was a photographer called. I, I think her name was Anna Wallström. Mm -hmm. Like. 15 years ago, before that, there was very traditional press photographers right. taking very, you know, you know, professional with tele lenses and so on. Right. And she came up with this wide angle camera, not fish eye, but right. this right. and was taking all these pictures had the same, how do you say, format? How do you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah format. Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of a, you got this dogma, you know, this reality feeling right. all that because she was there when it happened in different yeah. kind of angles. Yeah. Close up sometimes. So this is a different angle, this is a different look? Uh, yeah, this is more, more it's not a fish eye, so you, you right. won't look like a banana, but yeah. it, it's more... <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I do Never mind. That's great. So that's... So I was thinking about maybe, you know, just visualize sure. our businesses with, with that kind of a... Video format. Okay, so you just came. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. You came last night, or? I uh, came this morning. Or right this morning. Okay. This we're shopping for the kids. How many hours in, in time difference? Uh, it's five now because we we have daylight savings time in the US. Yeah, you don't, right? Yeah, this one, I, I really, I, I, I'm, I'm just booking up a lot of a lot of uh, like meetings, phone calls, Skype chats, and so on. And um, I've got problem with these time differences because. See where I'm going. Just keep on. Uh, because um, there's some one-hour daylight saving time. Yes. Which messes everything up. It messes everything up for a while. We've and been I, changed. And I have I haven't realized if if Google Calendar is um, are taking care of that. You see what I mean? Yeah, I don't know because it's we went early on it. So never mind. So when, when, you, when, when I do you switch them, to summer time? I don't know. It will be in, in a couple of weeks or three weeks or something. I don't know. But never mind. It's it's um, it's a, a it's a really mess because I invite them to in these calendars and I, I just put them on their time, and which shows my time. Right. And it's ne it it's always fails in one hour. Well, the worst I have is on my Apple, and I go to the time zone. It changes them all to that time zone, even when it's two weeks hence back in home. Okay. So I get back at home and I have meetings at two in the morning. Okay. Hate it. Yeah. Well, how's, your, how's your business going? Uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, our board is very, very satisfied, uh, and I'm, 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 I'm in the board, uh, but I'm not so satisfied because I would like to, you know, we have a, um, we have a, oh, this is recording now. Yeah. Oh, it is okay. <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but uh, never mind. But, uh, our board is from you the, from, it. from, from uh, yeah, <laughs> it's from the, you know, the, the, the paper business. So they are main owner of, of uh, a pay, a big, biggest one of the biggest pay, uh, newspaper in, in uh, Norway called uh, Dagens Nyheter, which is uh, an equivalent of uh, Dagens uh, Industri here in Sweden. Mm -hmm. okay. And they have also, you know, they're worldwide famous with their their um, niche industry papers like uh, recharging, uh, fishing, uh, you know, oil shipping, and that kind of industry. It's classic uh, Norwegian industries, and they have uh, magazines all over the world within this niche. So they are very paper heavy. You should yeah. go to these guys and you know explain what's going on because they are not really there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So what they do well, is they are doing that everybody else, more or less everybody else, they're protecting their business. Yep. With how do you say with <laughs> oh, I, I haven't worked for in English, but they protect the business very much and they sue people and they, you know, mm -hmm. uh, set up paywalls and and all this kind, and and they 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 they're protecting their fabric or they have their their, their, their own industry yeah. instead of just drag the business with the up with the roots and you know start from the beginning. And they treat us like they treat their all other businesses, and oh, you can understand. So, but uh, an answer to your question, if we, we're we're doing well. Uh, uh, my mission is you know to just. 
turn over all the, this really, you know, ugly PR industry into something real or something valuable for, for, for everybody that is involved in this industry. So I'm, as you might know, I'm a former journalist and I, I, um, I, uh, my mission is to just, from the beginning, help journalists to get access to all this content and, you know, trying to make these uh, sources transparent and authentic and, and right. all that. So when we're creating these social media newsrooms, and so we, we're creating it for, for for the reason that journalists will get a better, you know, access, better idea, better picture of these businesses. So, Journalist and, and customer too? Yeah, you know, all, all the people that, you know, uh, would like to access and follow these companies. In right. some kind. So we'll be just creating a sharing platform for, for, for this industry where, you know, people can just access and start following and get connected to these companies on both, both terms. So that's pretty much what we're doing. What uh, kinds of brands are working best? Well, I can't say actually, but we, we're working with a lot of brands actually. I think there are 30,000 brands working with us. Yeah, so we're, very, we're pretty famous here in, in, in the Nordic region, uh, uh, but also in, in, in Europe in general. But we're slowly moving into the US, but you know, nobody knows us or aware of us in, in, in the US. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. But I think I think it would make sense actually. Of course, there are some health reporters out and there's some, you know, similar businesses, but there's too few of them actually. Are you working with any PR companies? Yeah, they're working with us. Uh, some of them hate us, some of them just love us. What about Edelman? Uh, I don't know if they're working with us or not, actually. I haven't that on my... Richard, uh, he's unfortunately he's leaving. Richard Sandbrook uh, mm -hmm. was the kind of head of content for Edelman. Okay. I mean, he was going to help the brands create content. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to... He's ex-BBC. Uh, and now he's going to run a journalism school in the UK. Okay. But I think he's still there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. He'd be somebody good to talk to, I think. Okay. Where is he based? In the US? He's, yeah, he's London. In London. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll do that. It's recorded, so I will do that okay. for yeah. sure. Thanks for that. So, so when I when I when I say that, you know, the other is one other guy. Um, I'll remember his name. No, no why, why I'm saying this, that half of them just hate us and half of them love us, I, I, you know, I, I, I would say it's not really that, but some of these guys says that we're taking their job. Right, exactly, you're, you're disrupting this. So, so because they are, they're working in a traditional way, and, and but the, the guys who love us, they, they think we're helping their business. Why do this? I can <laughs> You're acting like a New Yorker, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, how are you doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Been praised, but yeah. But, uh, and and uh, how much of this of your time is uh, is all about speaking, coming around and speaking? I'm trying to do less of it. In fact, I, I drove them crazy for this conference and said no a couple of times, and they were nice enough to say, "Come on, come on, yes, come on." So I did it. I do love coming to Stockholm. I was very close to just invite you to. We have we have organized an unconference. Do you know what an unconference? Yeah, yeah. Is? Oh, yeah. So we organized an unconference here in Sweden with all journalists. So uh, it was on the, the, the main, how do you say, um, uh, Sveriges Radio. Uh, uh -huh. You know the how do you wow. say? Wow. The, the, the public radio. The public radio. Yeah. Uh, so there was like a few hundreds of journalists just talk about the future of journalism and so on. I thought you would be perfect there, but you know. Any solutions? No solutions, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots, lots, lots of ideas, but you know, no solutions really. I, I guess you, you read this um, Pew Research Report. Which one? They, they came out with a whole yeah. bunch this week. Yeah, they, they did that. Oh, yeah, uh, both of them, actually. Um, you know, it's, well, what do you say about these reports? I know, okay. There was, if, if there was the one from the, example, the, uh, the... summary, you know, or just... The one from... Um, Center for uh, Excellence in Journalism. Yeah, uh, yeah. Project for Excellence. Yes. I, I thought it was very good because it, it, it got to in-depth interviews with newspapers, anonymous, so you could get beyond the obvious. The most frightening part of it was that the culture still hasn't changed. Uh, it, it is changing in places. You can have that. You can see on the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, it, it changes in places. Right? Yeah. I, I, I advise John Payton and Digital First Media, yeah. which is... Um, I think doing wonderful things. 
and full disclosure, as an Yeah. Uh, and, and he's really, the first thing he did was go in and change the culture. Uh, it takes more time to change the business fundamentals, and he's changing that. But he changed the culture immediately and let everybody know that the their job is to, is to serve digital first, to move the company to become a digital company. And so it's possible. So, so the Pew study found that most companies haven't come anywhere near this. And they're not going to succeed if they can't change the culture. Yeah. So what do you exactly mean when you say culture? Can you describe that? Uh, embracing the change, uh, trying to figure out how to disrupt yourself, how to move to digital. Uh, truly mean digital first. Uh, too much. I, I think I, I, what Pew found, what I found too, is that there's two opposite tracks. One is to resist the change, to try to just preserve the old model. Yeah. Or two is to not have a strategy at all. And just try to incrementally um, fail not so... You mean just try an error? Or? Yeah, yeah just, just try to hurt a little less. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know exactly. You know, and um, uh, that doesn't work. Have you read this book, uh, Jim Collins, Built to Last? Uh, no, I haven't. It's, um, there's some fundamental uh, things that you never ever change within a successful company, and that is, um, that is um, the ideology, right? right, which is based on purposes and core values yeah right so they are you know they, they are you, know, you never change them from generation to generation uh, and then you have some uh, you know, some visionary framework I don't remember this actually but it's based on uh, big glorious goals and some I don't remember actually but there's something some parts that you never ever change and besides that you should change everything yeah you should be totally uh, flexible uh, Know, like it's about the fit this more or less and that, that's exactly what I think you know this paper uh, should or the, the media in general should you know taken care of it's, uh, it's hard I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. hard to disrupt yourself yeah. uh, and uh, you know, it, it's easy for me to talk about it but the majority of revenue still comes from print for a lot of these papers what, what Peyton and some others are trying to do and they're getting some success is to uh, become more than half digital revenue. And then the next goal is to be able to support your core services with your digital revenue only. Yeah. And if you get there, then you know you're sustainable yeah. as a digital company. Yeah. You might still keep print going and print contributes. Yeah. You may never sell print. Yeah. Uh, I think you know, print in its current form in newspapers isn't sustainable. But if you look at something like uh, Die Zeit in Germany, yeah. you know it's basically a very fat economist, yeah. Yeah. and very smart, very good. And the online product, uh, run by my friend uh, Wolfgang Blau, mm. is excellent. Mm. And um, you know, I could see a model like that, uh, where you know, at some point, does the New York Times even become a weekly yeah. paper? Yeah, but, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm really tired about this print or not print, actually. But but. What I do think, what is interesting here, uh, is what are you really buying? Are you buying the information, or are you buying a concept, or a habit? Or well, even whatever. beyond that, I'm, I'm arguing that that um, we in the content business think our value is encased in the content. That's why we say people must pay for this. Yeah. Right? Whereas Facebook and Google recognize that the value of content is that it is a signal generator. It makes by show, it shows our interests uh, and, and the value that they're going to get in the long run they just be dumb yeah. is relationships yes. so are we in the content business or are we in, should we be in the relationship business hmm, that's interesting but I don't know if I had really a good relationship with all these authors and, and, and writers and stuff no maybe you don't have a relationship with them maybe they help you have a relationship with other members of your community yeah you, you, I've, I've watched this happen with, with hyper-level blogs where people start to meet the neighbors they didn't meet otherwise. Yeah. Um, they can organize things together and stuff like that. Have you read the book Love Mod? Nope. It's um, a book by Kevin Roberts. He's a uh, global, I don't know, he's, maybe he's former global uh, 
CEO for such and such. Yeah. And he, the thing is with Love Mark, it is beyond trademarks. It's, it's where you, like a, a customer or user, or whatever, you are committed to, to this product or services or the concept because you just really love it. And you have to, you know, like a, 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 a company, you know, catch that landmark you right. don't you don't own that landmark they do no, right. Right. but exactly. uh, the funny point with that is is what are you really buying as a user or as a customer or whatever is it just a product or is it something much bigger much wider you see what I mean and right. he had he, he, Kevin Robert has a really nice example because he's he's, uh, he's former uh, an employee of, of um, Procter & Gamble and in he, he's uh, always been using this Head and shoulders mm -hmm. uh, shampoo with the dandruff for dandruff. Right. You see what I mean? And he's still using that. But the point is, he hasn't any hair since like 10 years, but he's still <laughs> buying this goddamn shampoo, right? Because he's loving. So we maybe he's still buying these yeah. papers because we love to just sitting in the in, in the breakfast and you know just be there with this yeah, paper. Yeah, too strong. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, this is my old neighborhood actually. It's called the uh, Apple Beacon. <laughs> it's, uh, 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 it's an Apple. Uh, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty exclusive area when it comes to Stockholm. So it's pretty close to the, to the town, to the city. And it's, I would say, one of the most like, exclusive areas. It doesn't seem so. It's not like in the United States where everything is so big and so on. God, I was in Las Vegas. God, oh, I hate that town. Uh, oh, it's just awful. You haven't seen how low America can go in Las Vegas. And it's the, you know, the, it's the, the final evidence that the human beings are, are crappy in some kind, of, at least some of the Americans, because it's so much commerce and, and everybody is screaming for money and, you know, it's, it's so unhealthy with all this gaming and all these fat Americans, and I, I felt really, really... I was there for a conference, so I was just inside this huge complex, and, and I never you know, see anything else, but I had two days before I left uh, for, for Stockholm, and I was you know, thinking maybe I should see this trip by the way, or, or, or something, but I couldn't stand it, so I just went to the gym, <laughs> <laughs> and back to the room. Yeah, it's a depressing it was, place. Yeah, it's a really depressing place. I think they have a tough time actually also because you know this seems to that people aren't coming there anymore. Yeah, they did a big construction boom and that's over. And so they had a lot of stuff that was half started and yeah, uh, that was nice. some. But Jeff, when is your next book? I don't think I'll do it in the book, I'm gonna do something different. Why not? I wanna do uh, the publishers are full of crap. <laughs> It's um, like, are you writing as a, mm -hmm. uh, are you writing as a, are you using the book as a marketing? Uh, well, to an extent, or? to an extent, it's also just, you know, ideas I want to explore and things I want to get out and so on. But yeah, I, I just tried, just wrote an ebook called uh, Gutenberg the Geek, for yeah. Kindle single, that's yeah. been fun. Yeah. And then what I want to do, I want to play with the idea of, conversations and events being the main thing and maybe a book comes out as a byproduct okay. I'm not sure what that means yet what, what do you say that got once again the Gutenberg which one yeah no the Gutenberg you said you do a project called Gu yeah I know that I read the blog post actually ah. about that yeah the, 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 with these glasses and yeah. you know yeah but what, what, what about the project you uh, you know what what happens now is you have, is that you have the conversations after the book's done. What if you have the conversations more before the book's done? I mean, I, I've done that to the extent that public parts, I basically presented it before I wrote it at Republica in Berlin. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, I've got some other ideas I want to explore where I don't necessarily know um, exactly what it is, and so why not explore it with the people? Right. And maybe kind of blow up in the conference business too. You're still teaching, right? Yeah. yeah. So, what was where, where's your passion? Your real passion? Um, you day to day, it's working with students. Uh, oh, I have 16. It's, it's it's like I'm on a 
boards of 16 company. Uh, teach entrepreneurial journalism so my students create new businesses. Have they had some, you know, how do you say, are they optimistic for uh, on the future? Or yeah. They are? Yeah. They are. This is it, somewhere. Now you know where you're going. <laughs> it is a neat neighborhood. But you, you're not working as a journalist anymore, right? Uh, not much. Uh, you know, occasionally write for the Guardian. But you're a blogger. Um, Great blogger. No, I, I, while writing the last book, I started kind of abusing the blog. So I've not been in the habit, which is I should be. 1725, it's supposed to be 17. Something to know? No. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. No, yes. Saying hello to each other. Ah, Sweden. <laughs> Sweden. <laughs> I have a friend who used to live here. No, this is it. Where should you park? I guess we are the, one of the first. We are right on time. We're early. But you don't know Magnus. Hmm? No. No. You do? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I know him. Very well, actually. <laughs> you know, Sweden is so small, so. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, thank For this you. This conversation.